Welcome back to the channel guys. This week we're just doing a little bit of maintenance on stuff we've got in this room. Right, okay, so today it's not going to be too much spider footage. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be maintaining and taking care of this little tub that we've got here, which is our Pac Noda Marginata, the Sun Beetles. Um, we've also got to put some bramble in with our Eurocanthers, so I thought, well, we might as well film this and um, show you what we do on a semi regular basis just to maintain some of the uh, species that we keep. We all know what we do with spiders, we literally just give them water and food. With these, it's a little bit more because we have to change the soil over semi regularly, clean out the poop, um, and just basically tidy up the enclosure slightly and uh, just check everything's not. Uh, too deteriorated in terms of uh, fly larvae and things like that. So we're going to turn the camera around, we're going to have a look at these guys in here and uh, hopefully we'll get some nice footage on. We'll catch you in a minute. So here we have the uh, Pachnoda marginata beetles who are our sun beetles and as you can see what we've got here is deep substrate with a few little uh, climbing yeah, climbing sticks and some fake foliage, big piece of cork bark. Now the trouble is, this piece has fallen down and these pieces are falling over. And this normally tends to happen once the substrate starts to get eaten up a little bit and the, the grubs in the base start to turn it to a bit of poop and frass and that type of stuff. And as you can see, we've got quite a few cocoons on the surface. So what we tend to do, we'll build this back up about another inch replace a load of this substrate and then I sift through a lot of this to make sure we haven't got any baby grubs. So what I'm going to do to start with is we're going to take some of the beetles out of here, we're going to lift a lot of these leaves out of the way, get the wood reset, get everything sorted out, give the glass a bit of a clean and uh, yeah we should be good. Right, let's get this camera set down so I've got both hands available shall we? Okay so camera's set down and uh, we need to move a few bits out. The issue is I don't really want all the beetles going everywhere but what we do is we catch a few of them up so that we don't cause them too much stress whilst we're doing the rest of the stuff. These beetles have got a hugely strong grip. Come on, off there. Hugely strong grip. Um, and when they get a bit nervous, they tend to poop on your fingers as well. But we're going to put these into a little tub so they're out of the way. We'll just take that out as it is. Oh. They either have a really strong grip or they just completely let go and fall upside down and play dead. It's one or the other with these, which is quite funny. As I do want to get to this bit, I need to get the beetles off of these leaves. Oh, where are you going? You've just fallen off you, haven't you? Right, let's get this fake foliage out of here, make sure no beetles are on it. Which obviously there are going to be a load on it, because why not? Okay, it's looking a little bit sorry for itself down here, I may take these ends off of this bit. Right, we don't actually have to take too many of the beetles out of here, to be honest, um, while we're doing this. They can all live on this piece of cork bark. There you go, you go back on there. Right, let's sort these bits out. As you can see, what happens is, they tend to eat the wood. The beetles and the grubs in the bottom, they, um, they eat this wood as part of their uh, diet. And growth. Hello you dude, you're upside down. Would you like to go that way up? You can go on there can't you then? And as you can see they do like a chomp on actual real bits of wood. Which is it's good, it's like this one here. It's just been buried so we've got that there. Right, let's get some uh, cocoons out. The cocoons we'll put into a little tub for now so they're nice and safe. We know how many of these we've got. One, two, Oh. 
what we do is when we redo this we'll bury these cocoons a little bit so they're kept out of sight and out of the way where are you going dude? oh hello another beetle we've got quite a few, There's, the beetles it's, it's amazing there doesn't like to be many in here and all of a sudden at night, or when you feed them, loads of them appear. Right, we've got all the cocoons in there. We've got one, two, three, four, five, ten, I think. Ten more cocoons on the surface, anyway. Um, right, let's have a look to see what we can do with this. Do we want to move this? Another piece of wood. Okay, so it's always fun when you forget to press record. Um, we're taking out the top layers of this soil, and I'm going to scrape through it afterwards. Because um, what we want to do is we want to just make sure that we get the poop from the top levels. Um, don't need to go too deep for that. But then we have to go through and filter through this to make sure that we are picking out the uh, the grubs. Because there's a lot of grubs that are going to be in this surface. I can see the soil moving a little bit. As you can see, the grub just see in the corner of that, the scoop there. And that grub is quite a big one. Where are you, grub? Let's filter you out. There you go. That is a Pachnoda grub. And they do give you a little nasty little nip if you let them. It's just gone off camera. But yes, we will find a lot of grubs in here. Which is nice, because then they turn to the cocoons. And then once we've got all those cocoons... What are you munching on? You're munching on another poop. Poop on the finger. Lovely. It smells like I don't know, lemons or oranges or something. It's, it's weird. What have we got down here? Aha. A lost skull. Wonder where that had gone. Cool. Size that beetle, the, the grub there. Sorry, size that grub. That one's quite dark as well. That one's hopefully going to cocoon soon. So we just keep digging, just keep digging, get a good layer out of here, and then we put some nice new soil in this and mix it all up. Now we have. A substrate for this, which probably can't pick up the label on camera, but this is uh, a mix of soil, white wood, leaf litter and things like that. But we also chuck a load of leaf mulch into the soil for the uh, bugs to eat. And we also have some old leaf mulch, which is really good stuff. This is like dried mulch, white wood and stuff like that, and the beetles love it. And we chuck a load of that in the soil in fact, we'll put the whole tub of that in. We can give this a mix into the soil. The beetles will eat this. It's good food for them. Give that grub into the nice new soil. Get all this mixed up a little bit. Right, time for new soil. Well, let's put leaf litter in first. Grub's getting near to turning, so we'll put him out of the way somewhere over there, so he's not being disturbed. And here comes a good bit, a nice new substrate, which I'm probably going to put all over my desk and all over everything. 
the, uh, the, the grubs what they need is just a mix of like white wood, rotten leaves, um, and a, you know they'll eat a bit of the food that the beetles don't eat as it sort of uh, starts to uh, disintegrate and decompose. Where are you trying to go dude? Come on let's put you over there so you're out of the way. Put you back on the wood. Just need to get to the soil so I don't want you to it's getting buried. Put some nice new substrate at the back. This is the other thing you'll probably hear. Some of them trying to fly. And they're not the best flyers in the world. In fact they're pretty rubbish at flying. Come here dude. Here yeah, look, you can go back on there. Just enjoy life for a moment. We don't compact this down too much, but we've got to get a nice new level of this in there. A couple more bits, we should be good. Now what we do before we put before we put the beetles back in that we've taken out, let's give this a big spray. Break up all the soil. Just checking underneath this cork bark. Oh, out of the way of that bit. Another little beetle down there. You can just go on there for a moment, mate. Right, this stick, this stick here is sort of almost like they're feeding sticks. I want that sort of held up right. So what I'll do is I'll put bury a piece under there like that. Make sure that sticks there. Another bit we go into the substrate and we sort of go across there. And you can see this bit they've been eating in the ground. But they like they like, like you know a bit of a climbing frame, so it's nice to give them nice to give them somewhere to climb. Just have to be careful how we put this in the ground so that we don't sort of stab a grub, stab a cocoon, because um, that would be bad. And this one we'll put at an angle just to support that piece there, I think. Like that. Here we go. So then they have all their little bits to climb on and do that. Right, give this a spray. The soil's pretty moist, so we don't need to give this a super dosing, so I'll just give it a spritz with this stuff. Get the surface a little bit down. And then what I'll do is I'll bury the cocoons and give the class a clean. Because I do have some fly pads. This is just simply because. I've had an issue with forage flies and the beetles can't get to this area here anyway unless they fly and I haven't had an instant yet where they've flown into this so I'm not too worried it's obviously working well but what this does is it just keeps the fly count down a little bit flies go on it bugs don't go on it and uh, we reduce the amount of flies that we end up in the uh, in the room Unfortunately, keeping this type of stuff, keeping moist substrate, you're always going to end up with flies, but it's about maintaining that number of flies and stopping it becoming an epidemic, which hopefully we've managed to avoid so far, just by doing regular maintenance on things like this. If you leave them too long, this is where you get issues. Um, you end up with lots and lots of flies in the setup. Um, 
I do apologise if my arms are in the way here at the moment, but I've just got to get this back bit clean as much as I can. As clean as I can get it anyway. You're never going to get glass perfect unless I actually use some glass cleaner. I don't like using things like white vinegar and stuff while there's actual animals in there. I do have some Repti Safe Cleaner, but yeah, not using that with the inverts. Not using that with these little beetles or anything like that. Right, glass is clean enough. Right, let's get these cocoons back in. So what we do with the cocoons, we take a cocoon like this, dig a little pilot hole, quite deep, we put the cocoon in and we just cover it and we just keep repeating that process. So we're going to dig 10 little holes, put the cocoons in, cover them up. This way, when I'm in here being with my size 12, 15 hands or whatever, I've come in here with my big stompy clompers, um, I don't go messing with the cocoons too much. I get them out of the way so when I'm doing feedings, basically, that I'm not going to be disturbing them and they're out of the way. And when they come out, they find the surface themselves anyway. Some of these can take a long time to turn into beetles. So let's let them go out there. I don't worry about looking at them. Then it, it settles my brain. If I'm sitting here watching them a lot, I sort of I keep thinking, oh, they're, they're not going to pop. They're not going to pop. They're still a cocoon. But when they're out of the way and I can't see them, I sort of forget they're there. So give them lots of little spaces to go to like that and the last one this one's quite a small one don't think this one's going to develop but you never know I've had some small beetles in the past and that's that bit done last thing to do if, well we can put the beetles back in first of all like this one hasn't moved off of here at all but now I'm moving him around he's going to fall off isn't he there you go look do you want to go on now get your legs out no, nope. alright. I'm going to fall off. I'm going to put this back in the corner again. Where it was. Sort of there. And give them their places to hide again. basically give them somewhere to hide out of the light if they want to. Some of them do, some of them don't, some of them just play dead a lot. Like, come on, these are such cool little bugs. Such cool little bugs. I'll just put this one back on there. Let them be happy on there. Right, okay let's get some of these other back in there shall we? Right, how many bugs we've got to put back in? It's only a handful. So, you're going to grip, or you're going to fall off. What are you going to do? You're going to grip. They're not the easiest things to hold on to either. They're not the easiest things to hold on to. They, they just fly into the enclosure like that. So, uh, yeah, try not to laugh when you see this happen. Poor little things. Right, you're going to grip. Don't pretend you're dead. You can tell the difference between a new one and an older one. These, the newer ones are very, very light in colour on their yellow. And as they get older, they start to go like a, a darker orange. You can see on their um, the backs where it just gets that little bit of shadow colour just on the end of their tail end. They're quite active. They're quite a cool thing to watch move around. Always uh, fun to see them climbing about and stuff. Stunning little bugs. Stunning. Yes, they are the uh, Pachnoda marginata, the sun beetles. Right, that's their maintenance done. That's all we do pretty much. Um, might just put a little bit more leaf litter on the surface of these ones, which will then get eaten away by the grubs when they surface at night and drag all the food down. 
but also the uh, the beetles have a little munch on them as well. So we'll give them some of that. Right, that's them done. Let's. Uh, oh, hello. <laughs> this is why you have to be careful with them, because you end up with some that escape. I've got one here just sitting on the back of the door. Didn't spot him. He's outside the enclosure. So uh, we'll get him back inside, and then we'll move on. That's their enclosure done. Lots of hiding spots. It's a good setup for the number of bugs that are in here. Right, let's, let's get the uh, Eurocanthus out. And as for these guys, there's not much maintenance needs to do with them. It's just a case of collecting bramble and replacing the old stuff with some new stuff. We have three in here. Let's just get that door past the lens. And all we've got to do with these, take the old stuff out, check on them, and put some new stuff in. Bramble at this time of year is not the easiest stuff to find decent, so unfortunately they get a little bit of a raw deal when it comes to the bramble. And the worst thing about bramble is it catches on everything, never releases itself, and is an absolute pain to deal with. Apart from that, it's lovely. Jeremy loves bramble. Jeremy loves bramble so, so much. You have to be careful with these guys a little bit. They give you a nasty little nip on their thorn if they uh, catch hold of you. And as you can probably see, we've got one out on display there. Just go and check where the others are. Right, one's down low. What's going on with you? You okay down there? This is the girl. The female is here. She's in there with two boys. Which, uh, despite rumours, is possibly not every girl's dream. There you go, you can go on there for now. Right. Top this up with some water. Oh, that one's empty. It's always a good start. And this one's also empty. Let's tip it in from above. And keep the pot in the back full of water so that when the bramble comes in, it keeps it alive for longer. Because the worst thing about bramble is it dies really quick. All we do with these is any bramble I take new growth off. So these tiny little leaves, because they can, in some circumstances, prove not to be very good for them. So let's get a bit in there. I know they can have other foods, so it's not just bramble, so I shouldn't moan about the bramble too much, because I could go and find some different food sources for them, but bramble is one of the easiest ones. And also, the other thing with these is, you can't just change their diet from one to another straight away. You have to sort of wean them off and gradually change their diet round. Well, that's best practice anyway. From what I understand, you want to make sure that if you are swapping the diet from one thing, say for example like bramble to hawthorn, you'd want to go from bramble to a mix to then hawthorn, you wouldn't want to just jump straight from one to the other. And that's basically the maintenance with these guys. All I do is tend to cover up down near this base where the water is, if I can, I tend to cover up access to that water a little bit so they don't go in there committing harry carry on themselves because they can be a bit dumb. Right, do you want that bit of bark back in there? There you go, put that in there for you. And you can have this bit back in there as well over there for something to climb on. And that's a lot easier than dealing with the beetles. No cleaning out the bottom. They do poop down there, but they've also probably got eggs if they're breeding. Don't want to disturb them. We've got three in here at the moment. Um, give them a little spray, get their humidity up a little bit, and uh, that's pretty much it for these guys. Right, let's put these back on the shelf 
and we'll uh, get back to the chair shall we and we're back in the chair so that is the Pacnoda Beetles, the Sun Beetles that we have um, I know it's probably not the most interesting of footage for some people but for others it might be interesting on how we keep the beetles um, deep substrate um, keep the poop to a low level it's very good for plants and stuff like that so don't sort of throw it away straight away what I tend to do is I tend to keep it in one of these tubs for a couple of months just in case there's any eggs in there um, I sift through it you've got spring tails you've got poop you've got an awful lot of good stuff in there for plants so if uh, once you've sifted through it after a couple of months if there's no bit grubs found then uh, put it on your plants and use it on there because uh, it's good stuff it's good fertile soil um, anyway so yes this week it's been a bit hectic here we have uh, Connor back from uni so um, I haven't had much time to do much filming or anything we've got a few rehouses we need to do we've got a few pairings that I've videoed but I need to get those edited and ready to upload um, obviously I still have the paintings to finish which I haven't done any more on yet um, so that's all in the pipeline there is stuff going on uh, next week I think will probably be a couple of pairing videos um, coming out um, I've got a bit of footage I want to show people um, just the process of what's happened with those spiders and it's a little bit of uh, variance with the two species as well that we've paired um, following on from that I have got to uh, rehouse the jumping spiders again uh, yes we rehoused them two months ago now uh, and in those two months they have grown significantly and they now can go into a nice arboreal setup um, so we've got that coming up as well soon um, I will move them across and give them some new homes and after that we have a couple of other things that we need to do we have our reduncus that has matured that needs to be rehoused re pretty soon once it's hardened up and we have um, a couple of pokies three pokies that all need rehousing a hattie hattie that needs rehousing a calciatum that needs rehousing and a few other spicy spiders mostly killer brachis that do need to go into larger homes so we have fun coming up in the next few weeks um, at my expense hopefully that will all go calm um, and that's it anyway if you did enjoy today's video sorry, right, sorry I keep looking off camera I've just spotted a pokey having a massive poop down the front of its enclosure so uh, something else I'm going to have to go and clean now but I am off I'm going to sift through this substrate and uh, I will catch up with you guys later on the live tonight. I think tonight we're doing Pictionary. So uh, if I see you there, we'll catch you in chat. See you later, guys.